All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Maddie here from Chill TCG. Today, we got another awesome deck list video for you guys today. We're going to be taking a look at the uh, ever so amazing ADP Hammers list. Now, I understand, right? I, I totally understand. A lot of people really dislike ADP. They hate playing against it, and uh, it doesn't get much better at all uh, for those players when uh, this ADP list is running Crushing Hammers. But, you know, it's our duty on Chill TCG uh, on the channel here to showcase the most successful decks in the format, the most playable decks. Um, and to definitely give you guys the advantage when going into these tournament series, uh, specifically Chill Series, which you guys should register. Uh, chill Series number 27 is going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, at 6 p.m. Uh, on that note, though, ADP Hammers, man, it, it's just as good as it was in uh, the previous format right now. Uh, E-Turn is still pretty relevant. Uh, Victini is very, very relevant. Uh, things like Urshifu. A lot of decks really don't love to get hit with Crushing Hammers because even more decks right now in the, in the format are focused around manually attaching their energies. Uh, so for that reason, I think that ADP Hammers has a... Uh, uh, specifically, a very good spot right now in the meta. It also does very well in the mirror matchup when you're playing against other ADPs that might not be running hammers. Um, but I do understand how oppressive this deck list can really be. Um, and it's a deck list that I, I don't suggest anybody, uh, you know, try to play against, right? It, it's definitely a deck that uh, if you're playing with it, you could be very, very successful, um, especially if, if you're a high level player and your sequencing is high. Um, high up on the charts, which mine probably isn't, but you know some of you guys who are really high level players watching this uh, Definitely could do very well with this deck list. So um, I'm not gonna go over it too too much again It's it's pretty simple. It's just ADP. Uh, we're running the the one crowbat and three to Dene's because this is a very fast-paced deck We want to be able to find those hammers consistently and get our GX attack off as early as possible two ADPs and four Zations Those are gonna be our attackers uh, the main components of the deck um, and I do think that running a 2-4 lineup is probably the most suitable way to do it. And then, of course, we have a, uh, um, a Mawile GX in here, uh, which is going to be just extremely good in a lot of different matchups to guarantee those two prizes under your opponent's bench so we can gust those things up, KO them for three prizes, and get our win condition all set up. Uh, on top of that, we have an Elder Gust Feast. We can get our supporters back from the discard pile. If you take a look, we're only running eight supporters in the deck, four boss, four research. That's really all we need because we are relying heavily on the Dedene and uh, the one Crobat. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we're going to be uh, feeling a little bit better about discarding that boss's orders earlier in the game, uh, so we can actually more consistently get it back with a quick ball search of an Eldegoss V. Uh, so that's why Eldegoss V is extremely useful in the deck. On to the trainer cards. Now, of course, Pokemon Search, we have four quick balls, three cherish balls. That's all pretty standard. The four crushing hammers thrown in there. We do have two switches and two escape ropes. I think that escape rope does make ADP much better, so I think it is a very, very... Um, needed inclusion in ADP these days to make it a bit more consistent um, and, and, and a lot of times is your win condition which I do think is really good. We're running two energy spinners to find the water energy, three energy switches, some people run four but I think with uh, crushing hammers kind of gives us a little bit more space, a little bit more time to set up that GX attack so I don't think the fourth energy switch is that needed. Um, one great catcher on top of the four boss of course can be really good uh, to go ahead and, and, and maybe research into um, if, we, of course, we, we aren't able to find the boss, it's just going to be another out to taking those three prize cards, KOing a Dedene or any other GX Pokemon, which might be on our opponent's bench. Four Metal Saucers, again, pretty much needed uh, when you're playing a Zacian List. And then, of course, one Chaotic Swell, uh, which I think is just really useful in a lot of scenarios. It can stop your Welder opponent uh, from setting up early in the game. Um, kind of just delay them that extra extra length. There's also other decks that really do rely on stadiums, things like uh, Single Strike Urshifu. Rapid Strike Urshifu right now really does like the, um, you know, the... Uh, the martial arts dojo, so that's something to keep in mind. And then all those decks which might be running Power Plant. Uh, so I think Chaotic Spell is extremely, extremely good. Uh, onto the tool cards, we have two Air Balloons, which I think is very appropriate for any Zacian deck, specifically ADP. And then the one Rusted Sword, which is just going to be our out, uh, mainly uh, to us possibly being able to KO those tag team Pokemon like a Mewtwo and MewGX, uh, like other ADPs like Reshiram and Charizard, whatever it might be. Um, Egg Row, whatever it might be, really. Uh, that Rusted Sword is going to be our out to not only needing to Gust, Right? We don't need to gust if we have the uh, the Rusted Sword, because we're actually doing 290 damage, which will be enough most of the time to KO those tag team Pokemon. Uh, so that is, of course, uh, a very important inclusion. We're running eight Metal Energies and three Waters. I think that this is the appropriate amount. I don't think running two Waters is good right now, because there are a lot of Hammers in the format. Um, and if you do prize a Water Energy and one gets knocked off, then you're pretty much... Uh, you know, you're, you're in a pretty tough position. So I think three water is appropriate, and I don't think you need more than eight metal energies to be 100% honest with you with the four metal saucers. So keep that in mind. Uh, potentially 12 energies, realistically, uh, metal energies in the deck. So that's the list. This is uh, ADP Hammers, ADP Zation Hammers. It's absolutely insane. We're going to get to some games. We're going to play. Again, the gameplay might not be the super high level, but it will showcase the deck and what it can do. I mean, I do have some experience playing ADP. I'm not a pro ADP player, uh, but I do somewhat know what I'm doing. So we're going to get to some games, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm um, going I apologize for showing you this absolutely insane list. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's get into it. 
Uh, we're going to play some gameplay here with ADP Hammers. It's extremely, uh, it's, it's honestly a fun deck to play, not a fun deck to play against. Uh, it does have a whole lot of potential, so I'm pretty excited uh, to get into some gameplay um, and, uh, and show you guys what the deck is all about. Uh, of course, the Hammers aren't necessarily consistency cards, but realistically, they're so good in a lot of matchups that it's just worth playing Hammers um, in ADP right now for this specific format. Uh, that we're in right now, to be 100% honest with you. He's going to let us go first. We're kind of uh, happy about that. We are going to mulligan, though, even though our deck is entirely basic Pokemon. Sometimes it happens. Nothing you can really do about it. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take the mulligan. We have no other option. Um, and it uh, looks like we're starting with a Mawile GX and a Crobat, which is not very good uh, at all. Kind of a, a catch-22. I don't know necessarily which one I would rather start with. We do have three Dedenes in our deck. We have a Research in hand. Maybe we want to keep Mawile. Um, just potentially to use it. So I am actually just going to start with the Crobat. It looks like we are playing a fighting type uh, deck, so maybe that wasn't the best option. But overall, I don't think the weakness is too bad. Uh, it looks like we're playing Single Strike Urshifu as well. Um, so that is something to keep in mind, uh, 100%. Now what I kind of want to do is, is just immediately play down the Mawile, even though that might not be the best decision um, in the world. Um, we could also Quick Ball away the Mawile GX, to be 100% honest with you. I think we're just going to Cherish Ball. Um, I think grabbing ADP here is important, uh, of course. And I don't think we actually need to do much with this hand here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do that. And now I think I might play the Mawile GX, just in case he has any draw supporters in his hand. That's going to be very good for us. Turn 1 Mawile is never super suggested, but it's actually a pretty valuable strategy if it hits. And we don't really lose much by it, other than giving up the bench space. Um, so I think, but we want to end our turn with, uh, with Intrepid Sword, right? Um, so maybe getting rid of the Mawile GX is our best decision. Actually, I'm going to keep it around. We're going to get rid of Energy Switch. Um, hopefully, it's not entirely necessary. They're not running Hammers in the deck, so I don't really see like uh, how it's going to be super helpful uh, next turn. Um, in our hand, we draw another. We draw a Boss, a Water Energy, and another ADP here, which is going to be super, super good uh, for sure. We don't have a Switching out yet, but again, we have a lot of things to go ahead and play from our hand to go ahead and, and draw those uh, those cards for the Switching option. We do see the Tower of Darkness. He's going to attach the Energy here, so he is going to Laser Focus. Um, what we could do is try to set position for a KO, but I'm actually not too, too worried about that, um, to be 100% honest with you. We should be able to get some KOs here, um, and I think that our best decision is going to be to just GX attack and then and then try to uh, go ahead and just rock out uh, with uh, taking you know some KOs on some two-prize Pokemon, like this Dedenne, which he is going to be putting on the bench here. He's going to draw a fresh six here. Let's see what he discarded. I discarded uh, one urn, uh, one energy, quick ball, a switch, and a boss, actually, so... Not too bad for us. Uh, he's going to laser focus here, which means that um, depending on if he gets some Hounders down on the board, uh, you know, we can freely set up our ADP with, uh, you know, the water energy and the GX attack next turn. So we are going to see the laser focus, but he didn't bench any Hounders. So now we're really kind of hoping uh, to, well, he only attached one, but either way. Okay, so there's a hammer, which is really good. So we would like to hit at least one hammer. Um, we do. So that is just phenomenal, phenomenal for us. I'm actually going to blow the spinner right off the gate and I'm going to grab a, um, okay. Yeah. That's a bit unfortunate for him. I mean, again, we had a pretty decent start. He didn't. He's not really down to play ADP Hammer specifically, so I understand that. Um, and that was kind of a tough start for him. We're going to get into another one. It's going to be tough to record these games without our opponents just scooping. A lot of times when you're playing ADP on the ladder, a lot of people just go ahead and can see the game almost immediately uh, because they know what they're in store for. Uh, and I understand that. But maybe we can get a close game here and showcase the deck a little bit better. Uh, we're going to be playing Panux, uh, which I believe might actually be uh, my man from... Uh, from the Pittsburgh Pokemon podcast. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Do we like to go first? Yeah, we're going to want to go first here with ADP here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what uh, his hand looks like. We're forcing to start with ADP here, which is never super ideal. And we have nothing else really progressive in our hand, although we can just attach a couple turns in a row uh, to get this GX attack off. So we're going to see if, uh, if we could potentially do that. So it looks like he's starting off with a Sableye, which is super interesting. Uh, we don't draw into a Pokemon, uh, a Pokemon like an Intrepid Sword or a Quick Ball or anything like that um, to get in Zacian to Intrepid Sword. So we're just going to go ahead and attach the Metal Energy and we're going to pass um, and potentially, uh, you know, end our next turn with, um, you know, playing most of these cards in our hand, to be 100% honest with you. He's going to attach the uh, the Dark Energy to Sableye. He can load search this turn, but he's going to have to discard some stuff uh, to go ahead and do that. Um, not a great starting option for him. I don't know what deck he's playing. It might just be Eternatus. I see the Great Ball here. Um, and a second Sableye, which is very interesting. So maybe this is just like a Sableye deck. Um, XP share, which I find to be super interesting. And we're going to see the Level Ball come out. So yeah, it looks like this is going to be Flapple Sableye. 
a very fun list, a very cool list for sure. Um, and uh, it's definitely going to be a very interesting matchup. He's going to go ahead and research away his hand on his first turn, just discarding two cards here. Uh, the two Sableyes on board is actually pretty cool for us. Um, now, realistically, they can get one-hit KOs on us. They can do a lot of crazy stuff. But, you know, to be 100% honest with you, with the Hammers, um, as well as uh, just taking multiple prize cards when we KO these Sableyes, because they are under 180 HP, um, I feel pretty confident in our ability to win this game here. Um, doesn't look like he's gonna. we're going to see any hand disruption as well, which is important. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not too stressed out about, like, everything that's about to happen here. There's the Zacian, so we actually love to see that. We're going to go ahead and spin her. Uh, we're going to grab the water. And uh, now I'm going to just pop this hammer 100%. That's heads. That's extraordinarily good for us, to be 100% honest with you. I don't know if I want to attach the air balloon to ADP here or to Zacian. I think we're just going to attach it to Zacian. I mean, we're going to go ahead and rock out with the research. Uh, discarding that metal energy, again, not too bad for us. We draw into three saucers, actually. So we're just going to go ahead and pop one immediately. Um, and now I feel pretty confident just, um, I don't know if there's anything else we actually want to do. So I'm just going to ultimate, uh, or sorry, alternate, cre altered creation GX. Um, and now he's down, no energies on board. I don't know if he runs any way to accelerate energies. Um, and he's going to be able to get some nice damage counters under our ADP here. But unless, uh, you know, he has a way to get two energies on this turn, like we could see maybe a bead or something of the such, um, we're not going to be too, too worried here. We can just set up with an ultimate ray next turn, um, and, uh, do some nice damage. So, uh, we're in a pretty good situation. To be 100% honest with you. Um, yeah. So we're, we're chilling. We're chilling. Again, like I said, uh, that EXP share is very good in Sableye. But again, uh, Sableye is a deck that struggles with hammers. Uh, specifically, just because they can't, uh, you know, really accelerate energy too, too quickly here. Looks like he's going to calm for a draw supporter. We're totally fine with that. He has a third Sableye in his hand, which is very funny. Um, and uh, we're going to see him... Uh, we're going to see him grab the Fion, actually, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be very good for him or very necessary for him. Um, but there's the Marnie, actually. So maybe he's going to Marnie us into a dead hand. Um, but um, really, we just need an energy, right? And we're kind of rolling. Um, and I'm kind of, yeah, so very good hand, nonetheless. He attaches the energy. Totally cool with us. And we're going to see another Pokecom. Now, if I were him, I might have potentially attached it to the bench Sableye just to be a little bit more safe. Um, because, of course, you know, we're kind of setting ourselves up for a nice KO on the Sableye here to take three prize cards. Um, we are going to see the Whirlpool section. Not a big deal. We have Air Balloon on the Zacian. Unless we see maybe a Tool Scrapper here, that could be pretty annoying. Uh, but no, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and load Search. Um, and now we're going to be uh, definitely able to KO the Sableye here in the active, which is always very good uh, for sure, right? So first things first, okay, so we draw into another metal energy, which is interesting. We're going to retreat into ADP. Let's attach the water to this dude here, and we're just going to go ahead and quick ball. And I think the dead end here is probably just going to be our best option to draw some more cards. Uh, we're discarding that one metal energy. We already discarded another one, but we do have metal saucers still in our deck. Uh, and just like that, there's another one. So we're going to go ahead and just rock out like this for sure. Uh, let's bench the second Zacian. I feel pretty confident doing that. And now we're going to ultimate Ray, getting the KO here, taking three prize cards uh, while also... Um, well, this has been interesting, but let's just grab these uh, these bad boys here. We're going to put the one metal onto the Zacian, and we're going to put the water onto our Dedene. Um, just kind of make it easier. We do have the metal energy in hand. We have saucers throughout the deck. We can cherish ball for another Dedene. And, of course, we are taking three prize cards here. Uh, so that's going to be important. There's another metal energy, which is always nice. Um, and our third Zacian V. Uh, so he could, of course, AD, uh, KO our ADP here. But, again, we're just one energy attachment away um, from KOing this Sable IV here. So I'm not too, too upset with anything that's happening here. We're going to see another research from our man. He discards double switch. Uh, so he's done two switch cards, a couple draw supporters. Uh, now we're going to see the level ball. So he's going to set up his board with some Applins here. Again, there's not much that he can do, right? I mean, he just has to hope um, that uh, he's able to consistently draw energies, hopes that I miss hammers, and hope that uh, you know I don't get a good start. But all of those things did happen for us, and they tend to happen pretty consistently when we're playing this deck. Uh, the fact that we see a Dedene there is pretty cool. Uh, so even if he does KO our ADP, we're just going to be able to KO with Zacian. Um, if he doesn't, um, if he retreats into maybe a single prizer, uh, we have Great Catcher uh, to go ahead and get the KO. Uh, he does set up the Sableye, so he's going to go ahead and do a nice uh, 310 damage, I believe, is how this this card works. I think it's 30 more. Oh, it's 60 more, so he's doing 610 damage, actually, which is kind of crazy. Now it is 310. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the game. So again, you know, it, this deck list is pretty tough. Uh, this is kind of an interesting matchup for sure, Sableye Flapple. Um, but uh, of course, it's one of those things where... Uh, you know, we hit that hammer earlier in the game that really did make the difference. 
And we're just going to go ahead and take the KO with Brave Blade, taking our last three prize cards. Sableye, it's a tough matchup for ADP for sure. Um, we did get a nice start there. That one hammer was extremely important. Um, but like I said, it's important in a lot of matchups. So uh, that was a decent example. Again, a really quick game. A very quick game. But again, that's a lot. That's that's really how uh, matches tend to go when you're playing ADP, uh, specifically ADP hammers. So we're going to go ahead, hop into another one, see if we can't just get a third game uh, to showcase a little bit more what this deck can do. Looks like we're playing Pastor 22. Pretty cool. He's going to call the coin flip. Looks like we might be playing a Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, uh, which we don't actually like necessarily hate, but we don't love it too much either. Uh, overall, it's a pretty even matchup. Two of probably the best decks in the format. Um, but uh, at least we're not playing E-Turn VMAX, right? Uh, so we'll see how the game goes. I think really this game, this this matchup really just depends on who gets the better kind of start off first. The hammers are going to be really good because we're going to kind of stop him from, uh, you know, using that second attack, hopefully. Uh, this is tough because I don't want to start with Zacian necessarily. Um, but maybe starting with Zacian is actually just the best play still because we're going to Intrepid Sword. Uh, but just because we didn't have any draw support, it was a little bit... Uh, a little bit sketchy starting off with ADP in the active. So I think it's always smart to not start with ADP in the active because you force them, of course, to boss it up. Uh, and we're actually playing single strike. So I thought it was rapid strike. It's actually just single strike, which is totally cool. Um, we've already played this guy or already played this deck. He's actually playing Dojo in his single strike or VMAX, max, which is crazy. This guy's really trying to get the one hit KOs here. Um, discards the boss's orders to grab the Houndour. All good stuff for sure. Hammers are going to be extremely good in this matchup for sure. He actually gets the double Houndour setup and he is going first. So this is going to be a very advantageous setup for him uh, for sure. Uh, but what we can do is there's no hammers, unfortunately. He doesn't run hammers either. Uh, but we're going to attach the metal anyway. We're going to bench the second Zacian. And we're just going to go ahead and Intrepid Sword. Um, and uh, we do draw into some uh, some draw supporters. No switching options. It, look like, it looks like we might be denying away this hand, unfortunately. Um, and we can definitely see a big KO. Uh, from the single strike guardship of this turn. Um, our hand was a little bit tough. We didn't start with any way to draw more cards, uh, find hammers, um, and he did go first. So that's definitely going to be advantageous for him uh, 100%. But uh, we'll see. He's only got four cards in his hand. I don't know if he has anything super progressive. So again, if he just like attaches and passes uh, as a fly, um, <laughs> then uh, that could be really good for us. He's going to Marnie us. So again, never great. He's going to draw more cards, and we're going to drop our hand size down pretty low here. Um, we did have the water energy in hand and a way to draw more cards, so that hand was actually pretty decent. Um, but uh, we'll see what we draw into here. Uh, okay, so nothing too, too bad. Um, I guess we do have the boss. We have Cherish Ball to draw to Dene. Uh, we can attach the Rusted Sword as well. Um, he's going to go ahead and grab the Houndoom. So I, I assume he probably has a way to draw more cards here, uh, to be completely honest. Uh, if he didn't already have a way to draw more cards here. So yeah, he's going to Quick Ball now for probably a Dene. Maybe a Crobat, actually. Uh, we'll see. He gets rid of the Rose, so he's running Rose. Our Cricketune. Cricketune is, is all the same, right? Uh, for sure. Um, looks like if he doesn't have a Switch card in hand, he's just going to attach here, and then um, Single Strike Roar. So he's going to attach three. Now, if he draws some good stuff off this Cricketune, you know, we could be in a pretty difficult situation. Um, he's going to draw two cards here. Those could be two very important cards. Let's see what he drew off those two babies. Let's see. Uh, actually, the Air Balloon. So he attaches it to the Cricketune, uh, creates a nice pivot, and he just gets some damage off on our Zacian, which we're not actually too, too upset about, uh, all things considered. Um, okay, so this is pretty important. I am uh, I don't think the Rusted Sword actually matters in the matchup, and we might would rather just save it for, um, of course, the, uh, you know, the Air Balloons. Because I don't think the math matters. Actually, it might, because after he gets the damage counters on, Rusted Sword might actually be very important uh, now that I think about it. Uh, we're just going to do that. We're going to attach there. And it looks like we're just going to be deadening away our hand. Uh, we have all three left in our deck, which is good. Um, now we're going to hope to just draw some more cards. We need a switch. First of all, a switching option. And we need a, an access to the water energy. Uh, we do not get that, but we do... Yeah, there's actually not a whole lot in our hand. That's actually very good. Um, but uh, what we can do is just saucer to this dude. We're going to throw some hammers out. Uh, we hit the first one, which we love to see. Um, he only has two cards in his hand, which is always good. Let's see if the second one hits. It doesn't. Uh, a bit unfortunate for him. And uh, we don't know what's in his hand. I don't really want to mawile. He only has two cards in his hand. Um, but I don't know what we don't benefit from just mawiling here. Uh, to be 100% fair. To be 100% honest with you. Um, so maybe we just pop the mawile GX just in case he has like a, 
like a like a Dedenne or a Crobat in his deck. The fact that he put down Krikatoon makes me feel like he doesn't. Um, so perhaps just uh, we're holding we're gonna hold on to the Mawile. Um, and unfortunately, we're just gonna go ahead and Intrepid Sword. Um, we do draw an Air Balloon, uh, but it looks like uh, missing out on the GX attack that turn was extremely bad for us, um, and not a whole lot else that we could really do. Um, just unfortunate draws. He attaches the draw or the capture energy, which is actually pretty cool to have in the deck. He puts another Urshifu down, and now yeah, of course he has the Quick Ball, and he's gonna go ahead and draw a Crobat off the cards. Uh, so not super ideal for us. We're already down two hammers. Um, oh, he actually just draws the Hounder, and he's gonna go ahead in an exciting stage, um, because I guess he doesn't have any other draw support. Stage two Pokemon, which is fine. He's gonna draw three off there. Let's see what he picks up. Um, we're both kind of just drawn uh, some some dead cards. For sure, he goes ahead and, and pops the Urn of Vitality, uh, so he's going to go ahead and put a second one on here. He is going to be able to put four energies on his Urshifu this turn, and he drew into the research. Pretty unfortunate for us, uh, and very, very fortunate for him. Um, and uh, now, what we're actually relying on is a way to boss him out, right, and to stop him from uh, switching back in. But he hasn't played any switch cards yet, either, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, missing GX attack last turn was, like, the most important thing. Um... If, if we were able to get GX Attack off last turn, we would have had a much better outlet to win this game. Uh, but unfortunately, we just don't have it, um, and there's not much else that we can really do, right? He's going to take two prizes here. Um, he's set up for a KO um, on the on our next turn. He didn't even need to discard his energies either, and he has a massive, massive hand, and we really have no form of, uh, of um, you know, hand disruption, right? So missing our GX Attack last turn was, like, extraordinarily bad for us. Uh, what we can do is pop the Mawile now, um, although... It didn't do anything? Am I missing something? What just happened? Why didn't it work? Am I missing something? What? I don't... I don't understand why it didn't do anything. I don't know. I'm pretty confused by that to be 100% honest with you, but that's fine. Uh, nothing else we can really do there, I suppose. Um, let's bench the Zacian, and then we're just going to go ahead and do Dene out. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, thing that just happened there. We have a hammer, so at least we can just pop that. We do hit heads, which is pretty cool. Let's knock that guy off. Um, now what I kind of want to do is just spinner. We're going to be able to grab the water energy, um, and uh, we're going to attach here, and uh, we're actually just going to research away the hand. Um, not much else that we can really do here. We do have escape rope, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this crushing hammer. That's a tails, unfortunately. So we're, uh, two for four on the hammers. We're just going to pop the escape rope. He's going to go into the cricket tune though. Uh, so it's not actually really going to change much. And our ADP is going to be down for the count, um, next turn, which is very bad for us. And I just don't think we have, uh, any real out, um, to win the game here. Unless, of course, we can get a KO on this Urshifu next turn. Um, and then just kind of stop him from setting up from there. Uh, because, again, we are doing enough damage with the Zacian now with the Rusted Sword, but we need uh, a Metal Saucer, and um, we need him to not set up this Urshifu here. He has a large hand, so I assume he's going to be able to evolve into multiple Hound Dooms here. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he's kind of rolling. He's got only one um, f energy, special energy in his discard pile. I don't know how many he prized. Probably none. Uh, he also took two prizes already. And he is going to start setting up that second Urshifu V, which is pretty bad for us, uh, 100%. Um, we're all out of hammers as well. I just don't think there's anything else for us to really do here. Um, and like I said earlier, missing that GX attack was honestly just the difference between us uh, winning the game and not winning the game, right? Uh, kind of put us a whole turn behind, and, and there's just nothing else that we can really do. And he doesn't manually attach to that other one, so he's getting all the energies that he needs right now. Um, and next turn, he's going to be able to set up that guy and just KO whatever we have in the in the active spot, right? So not much else we can do. Again, we can take four, four prizes here, um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, just a tough, it's just a tough go. Uh, if we hit some of those hammers earlier in the game, we would have maybe had been in a better position. Uh, but again, like I said, there's just not much uh, that we can really do here. Um, now, if we were to draw into like a... Uh, okay, so the switch isn't really good for us, right? Um, we can't boss this thing up either because we have to research this turn. That would have been like our only out would have been to try to boss this up and KO this, KO this thing. Uh, but we have no way to do that right uh we have absolutely no way of doing that he hasn't played any switch cards either so i guess we could try to hope that he uh you know doesn't have the switch card that might be the best decision because if we ko this like he's just going to go ahead and set this thing up and ko it um i guess he could not have v max 
So maybe the best decision is to hope he doesn't have Switch, but I just assume he's going to have the Switch card. Um, and, uh, you know, not much else we can really do in this situation. So unfortunately, I think our best move actually, though, might be to bring up this Houndoom. Um, because we can't KO this thing, right? Like, we just can't because he's going to just go ahead and set this one up and then KO us. Um, so maybe we just try to boss him this turn into the Houndoom and just kind of stop him for at least for a bit from trying to, uh, um, you know, get the KO on us. So I'm actually just going to go into this Asian and we're going to Intrepid Sword with this guy here. Uh, there's the Saucer. But again, yeah, not much else, again, that, that we could really do here. He was just kind of one turn ahead. We missed out on our GX attack, and, and there just wasn't much else for us to do here. He's going to go ahead and earn a Vitality. He has a big hand. He hasn't played any Switch cards. It's very unlikely that he doesn't have a Switch card, uh, to be 100% honest with you. So, again, I don't really think there's anything for us to do here. Um, he also has three Houndoom, so like what he can do is just go ahead and attach one, um, and then use the rest of them to manually retreat out. So that's always going to be an opportunity for him. Um, and that's actually what he's going to do. He's just going to put two on and he has a third one. I mean, if he has an energy in hand in the VMAX, then we're just going to go ahead and get knocked out. Uh, so nothing really else for us to do, um, with that. So we're going to see a manual retreat. Now he just needs a, a manually attachment. Oh, okay. So he actually just goes to the impact blow, which is going to be enough for the KO. Uh, yeah. So nothing else for us to really do there. Again, we were kind of in a position where no matter what, uh, we, we just, we didn't have anything to, uh, to stop him in that game necessarily. Uh, pretty unlucky for us to miss that, uh, you know, that GX attack off on that turn, that was kind of the difference. If you don't get that GX attack off uh, in a lot of matchups, you're just probably not going to win the game. Um, but again, that's kind of this, the sacrifice you make when uh, you, you kind of get rid of some some consistency cards, of course, for the hammers. Um, and in that matchup, the hammers aren't necessarily too, too viable. Uh, so that matchup probably isn't super good for ADP hammers, uh, which is understandable. Uh, but you know what? Uh, sometimes it just goes like that. And I guess it's good to show you guys how you can lose in some of these games, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, though, that's going to be ADP Hammers. So I, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. I know that uh, ADP is uh, something that most of you guys probably don't like. But again, this is a very viable deck list. And if you're looking to do well in some of these online events, specifically Chill Series number 27, which is tomorrow, uh, of course, at 6 p.m., 250 Battle Styles packs in the prize pool, 100% free entry. Link to register will be down in the description below. You guys should definitely check out this list. Uh, a lot of people have been really successful recently running ADP Hammers, and I think that this is uh, the best way to play it specifically. So... That's it, guys. We're going to get out of here. I've been Maddie from Chill TZD. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, Yellhorn Podcast, and maybe another upload. Uh, but the main thing is, is Chill Series is tomorrow, so I'm super excited for that. Uh, shout out to the channel members. Shout out to Card Cavern. Use code Chill TCD for 5% off your entire order. Uh, I've been talking for like 30 minutes straight, so I'm going to get out of here. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.